Hello, it's Oliver, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Literature with Oliver, and it's our story today called The Girls Who Got Battle. Let's get started. And you have to remember, The Ballads of Buster Crushed is a styles, stylized Western movies by the Coen brothers, consisting of six episodes adapted from short stories, and the longest entitled is The Girl Who Got Battle, which is clearly an enhanced version of wine short stories, The Girl Who Got Rattles. It is rather interesting exercise exercise on your t own or in the classroom to think about and discuss the changes in, in the enhance enhancements that distinguish this film version from the original. What changes did he Collins make the storyline? Characters and final dramatic scenes and toilet effects. That is one of the stories of Alfred. There is many of them still floating around the West. Ah, uh, for Alfred was in the time very well known. He was a little man and he was bashful. That is the most that he can say against him. But he was very little and very bashful. bashful. Once on horseback, his legs hardly reached the lower body lines of his mount and only his extreme agility agilities enabled him to get off safely. When on foot, Tranter were inclined to call him Sonny, in company he never advanced an opinion. In things, if things did not go according to his ideas, he reconstructed the ideas and made the best of it. Only he could make the most efficient, spite of the poorest ideas of many men on the plains. On the plains, his attitude was a perpetual sliding apology. It was as being said that Alfred killed his man differently, differently, without enthusiasm. I fell loath to take the responsibilities and that the pioneer days on the plains was either frivolous affection, suffocation, or else effort with women's teeth was lost and was taken to have a stake and um, staked the last ones of just uh, at odds that he has never in his life made a definite assertion of fact to one of that opposite sex. Um, when it become absolutely necessary to change a woman's uh, preconceived notions, a preconceived notion as to what she should do, as for instance, discouraging her writing through consent he would persuade somebody else to share the advice, and he would cower in the background, blushing his absurd little blushes at his second-hand temerity. Temerity. After this narrow, sloppy shudder a soft point and demeanor and to meet to pay him why face. But after this, can read the uh, fairies like a book. Fairy. Prairie. Perry. Prairies like a book. He could write anything, just like accurately was the heart afraid of nothing, and could fight like a little kid amount when occasions for is really a rose. Catamount. Among those who knew, Afri was considered one of the best scouts on the plains. Scouts. That was why Caldwell, the capitalist and capitalist, engaged him when he took the daughter out of Deadwood. Miss Caldwell was determined to go to Deadwood. A limited experience of the lady's sword with the Abwood and floors and tent towels to the tent poles, an expert close to the declare, uh, delectation. delectation of the campers has convinced her that roughing it was her first race creation. So, of course, Keltwell was senior had sooner or later uh, to take her across the plans of his annual trips. There was at a time when wagon trains went by ways up here in the north that's South Fork uh, on the South, and incidentally, the Indians, uh, a homicidal tendencies, 
and, and develop ideas as to the properties of doing what the, they were told, make things interesting um, occasionally, but not often. Um, there was really no danger to good science train. The daughter has this fiance, um, fiance named Ellen, who lied roughing it too. So he went along. He's a Miss Cowell, raked himself um, bountifully and prepares to enjoy the trip. Appears the train to aid wagons was made up, and then they were joined by Alfred by Billy Knapp. And these two women were interesting but uh, tyrannical. On one of the two points, such as getting out of sight of the train, for instance, they were so indefinite in reasons for their tyrannies. The young people chaffed uh, and finding Billy Knapp either uh, in, uh, imperturbable. 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 Or thick skinned. They turn their attentions to Alfred. Um, Ellen annoys Alfred and Miss Cowboth thoughtlessly approves a balance between the succeeded often as shocking fearfully all the time man's finer sensibilities. Um, if it had been a question of Ellen alone, they announced annoyance would soon um, have ceased. Um, efforts would simply have bashfully killed him. But because of his innate court courtesy, innate courtesy, which so saturated him, saturated him so that the philosophy of life was thoroughly tinged by it, and he was silent and inactive. There is a great deal to recommend a, a plan's journey journey at first. Later, there is nothing at all to recommend it. Um, it has the same monotony as the voyage of its at sea, uh, only there is less living room. And instead of being carried, you must progress to a great extent by your own volition. Volition. I'll go further this course. The water port and the cannon bath bath um, to black blame men and or a man who has his instinct the things are as nothing is in, in conversion with the charms uh, of the outdoor life. And the pleasing tingling uh, the, um, of adventure. A woman is a creature wedded to convert. She also has a strange instinctive desire to be entirely alone every once in a while. Probably because her experiences, while not less numerous than the man's, are merely um, psychical, psychical, and, and she needs occasionally time to get. I uh, thought to date, so Miss Cadwell began to get uh, very impatient. The afternoon of the uh, 16 days of Fred, Miss Cadwell and, and Ellen rode along side by side. Fred was telling a self effects a facing story of adventure, and Miss Cadwell was listening carelessly because she has nothing else to do. Ellen chaffed lazily when the fans seal took him. What kind of limb? asked the young Esterner with a great brutality. He glanced with a half new humorous assignment at a girl, who to whom the little man has been mainly addressing himself. Alfred hesitated, blushed, lost the thread of his tail, and finally get uh, grace confusions, reins back his horse by the hash uh, Spanish bed. He fell uh, to the rear of little wagon trains where he hung his head and, and went hot and cold by turns and thinking of such an in, indiscretion before a lady. The young Easterner spurred up on the right of a girl's mount, his queerest little fellow ever saw. He observed with a laugh, um, laugh, sorry to spoil his story. Was this good one? Um, it might have been if uh, you hadn't spoiled it, answered the girl, flicking her horse ears mischievously. The animal stands. What did you do for? Uh, what did you do for, for? Oh, to see him squirm.
you think about um, all the rest of the afternoon and then we hardly dare look you in the face next time we meet. I know, isn't she, he's funny? The other morning he came around the corners of the wagon and caught me with my hair down. I wish you, uh, you could have seen him. She laughed gaily at memory. Let's get ahead um, of the dust, she suggested. The drew us on to him from turf um, at the prairies and, and put their horses to a slow lope. Once while we had a canvas cover schooner, sco schooners, uh, they slowed down to walk again. I first say we will see them t uh, tomorrow, said the girl. See what? What the hills? Uh, they will show like a dark streak down past that but there was his name, Porcupine Tales. Oh yes, uh, and, and after it's only three days, are you glad? And you? Yes, I believe I am. The lab is fun at first, but there's certain monotonies in making your toilet where you have to dog your hat because you haven't brooms to raise your hands and this barrels, water pots after a time. I think I will glad to see your hounds again. People like camping about so long. It hasn't gone back on me yet. While you're a man, I can do things. Can't do on. Can you do things? Uh, you, you know, I can't. What do you suppose that they say if I were to ride about, ride down just the way for two miles? They have a fit. Who's had a fit? Nobody but off red. And I didn't know you got gotten afraid of him yet. I say just less. We'll have a race, in and then come right back. The young man looked boorishly eager. It would be nice, it would be nice, she mused. They gazed into each other's eyes like a pair of children and laughed. Why should we, why shouldn't we, are still young men? I'm dead sick of staying in a moving circle of these confound, confounded wagons. What's the sense of it all? Way, of, of, all of, of it all? Way? Why Indians suppose, say the girl. Definitely Indians. He applied, replied to contents, and, and we hadn't seen a sign of one since we left here. I don't believe there was a whole blast country. Besides, you know that Af um, Alfred says uh, at our last camp. What did Alfred say? Alfred said he hadn't seen even TB Trail, that and that it must be ah oh, hunting buffalo. Besides that, you don't imagine for a moment that your father was take you, you on his way to that wood for a lark, lark. If uh, there was the slightest danger, do you? Uh, I, I don't know. I made him. She looked down over a long sweeping descent to which they were coming and the long sweeping ascents they lay beyond. The breeze and the sun played with the Perry's glass grasses. The breeze rift, rifling some over, and the sun silvering their under surface thus exposed. It was truly peaceful, and one almost expected to hear the hums of bees as a New England orchid, and its awe was a sign of life. We got lost, she said, finally. Oh, no, we wouldn't. He asserted us with all the eagerness of the amateur plainsman. I got that all figured out. You see, our train is going to unwind with the butter behind us and the sun, so if we go ahead and keep our shoulder just pointing to the bud, we will rise be the lunch a march. She looks to her for admirations uh, of his cleverness. She seemed convinced she agreed and sent him back to her wagons for some article of inventor's necessity. While he was gone, she slipped softly over the little hills to the right, cantered rapidly over two more, and slowed down with a sign of satisfaction. Once alone, could watch the directly shadow as well as two. She was tree and alone. It was the one thing she has desired for the last six days, a long plain journey, and she enjoyed it now to the full. No one had seen her go. The driver drowned stubbornly along. It was the wo their wont. The occupants of the wagon slept, as was the wont, and the diminutive Alfred was hiding his blushes behind clouds of dust in the debris. 
It was not his wont at all. He has been surreal, severely soft, and he wants to have probes over as all the afternoons. If his discovery has not started him too actively, activity on a bare spot of the prairies who discerned the prints of the hoof. It was not that of one of the trained animals. Everett knew this, because just to one side of it, caught under the grass blade so clun- cunningly that only a little scout's eyes could have discerned it at all, was a single blue of a bed. Everett rode out on the prairies to right and left, and, f- and found to her prints of about thirty ponies. He pushed his pet back and wrinkled his brows. For the one thing he was looking for, he could and could not find the two narrow furrows made the end of teepee poles dragging along on these there signs of the ponies. The absence of these indicates that the band was composed entirely of bugs, and bugs were likely to mean mischief. He pushed ahead of the whole parties, his eyes fixed earnestly. On the ground, at the top of hills, he encountered the young Easterner, the later looked puzzle, in a half-humorous way. I left Miss Cowell here a half minute ago. He have served to Alfred, and I guess she has given me a slip. Scold her good for me when she comes in, will you? He grinned with good nature's malice. The the idea is Alfred scolding anyone. Then Alfred surprised him. The little man straightened suddenly in his saddle and uttered this fer- fervent curse. After a brief circle about the prairie, he returns to the young man. You go back to Wagon and wake up Billy Nat and tell him this, that I'm gone scouting the SM and I him and want him to watch down. Understand? Watch out. What? Begins the Easterner be watered. I'm a going to find her says the little man, decidedly. You don't think there is any danger, do you? asks the Easterner, in anxious tones. Can I help you? You do as I tell you, replied the little man, shortly and rode away. He followed Miss Cadwell's trail quite rapidly, for the trail was fresh. As long as he looked intently for hook muff marks, nothing was to be seen, and the theory was apparently virgin. But by glancing the eyes forty or fifty yards ahead, a fence line with discernible curly grasses. Every come upon Miss Cudwell seated quietly on her house in the very central and prairie dog towns, and so of course in the midst of the area of comparatively desert character. She was amused herself at watching the marmots of the marmots as the bark a watch a peep at her, according to the distance from her. The sign of Alfred was not coming, for he frightened their marmots. When he saw Miss Cabal, Alfred grew bashful again. He settled his horrors up to his her and blushed. I will show you the way, miss, he said differently. Thank you, replied Miss Cabal. Cowell, with a slight coldness. I can find my own back way, my own way back. Yes, of course, hastens Alfred in the agony. But you, but don't you think you, we ought to start back now? I'd like to go with you. Miss, you won't let me. You see the afternoon quite late. Miss Cabell casts his critical eyes at the sun. Why is horror yet still dark? She says amusedly. Then a friend surprises Miss Cabell. His different. Diffident's manner suddenly left him. He jumped like lighting from his horse, threw the reins over the animal hat, so he would stand and run around and face Miss Cabell. Here jumped out, he commanded the soft sound and burr of his ordinary conversation has given place to clear and seriously and incisiveness. Miss Cabell looked at him amazed, seeing that he did not at once obey. Alfred actually began to fumble hastily with a strap that held her running skirt in place. There was so unnat- unusual and a bashful effort that Miss Caldwell rose and slipped in line to the ground. Now what? She asked, Alfred without replying, thrilled a bit 
to within a few inches of the animal hoof and tie both fetlocks firmly together with a double loop. He has brought the pony nose down close to his shackled feet. Then he does the same thing with his own beast, because neither animal could so, could so much as noble, one way or the other. They were securely moored. Ever stepped a few paces to the eastward, Miss Kawa followed. Sit down, said he. Miss Kawa obeyed with some nervousness. She does not understand at all, and that made her afraid. She began to have a dim fear lest Afra's might have gone crazy. His next move strengthened his suspicion. He walked away ten feet and raised his hands over his head, palm to forward. She watched him so intensely that for a moment she, she saw nothing else than she followed the directions of his gaze and utters a little sobbing cry. But below his sky lines, the first blob to ask for his word was so how did so a figure on horseback the figure on horseback says motionless we are in for we are in for a fight we are in for a fight said Alfred coming back after a moment he will answer my peace lines and if I see us he can't make a run for it through this data we just got to stand him up That is one of the stories of Alfred. There is many of them still floating around the West. Ah, uh, for Alfred was in a time very well known. He was a little man and he was bashful. That is the most the can can say against him. But he was very little and very bashful. Once on horseback, his legs hardly reached the lower body lines of his mount and only his extreme agility agilities enabled him to get off safely. When on foot, strangers were inclined to call him Sonny. In company, he never advanced an opinion. In things, if things did not go according to his ideas, he reconstructed the ideas and made the best of it. Only because he could make the most efforts in spite of the poorest ideas of many men on the plains. On the plains, his attitude was a perpetual sliding apology. It was as being said that after to kill his man differently, differently, without enthusiasm. I fell loath to take the responsibilities and that the pioneer days on the plains was either frivolous affection, suffocation, or else effort with women's he's was lost and was taken to have a stake and um, state the last ones of just uh, at odds that he has never in his life made a definite assertion of fact to one that opposite sex. Um, when it become absolutely necessary to change the woman's uh, preconceived notions, a preconceived conceived notion as to what she should do, as for instance, discouraging her writing through crescent. He would persuade somebody else to share the advice, and he would cower in the backgrounds, blushing his absurd little blushes at his second hand's temerity. Temerity. Add to this narrow, slobbing shoulder a soft point and demeter. And meter to the pink and white face. But Afras can read the um, prairies like a book. Prairie. 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 Prairies like a book. He could write anything, just like accurately was the heart of phrase and nothing. And could fight like a little kid amount when occasions for is really a rose. Catamount. Among those who knew, Afray was considered one of the best scouts on the plains. Scouts. That was why Caldwell, the capitalist and capitalist, engaged him when he took the daughter out of Deadwood. Miss Caldwell was determined to go to Deadwood. A limited experience of the lady's sword 
where they have wooden floors, untanned towels to the tanned poles, an expert calls it to the declar uh, delectation. Delectation of the campers has convinced her that roughing it was her first race creation. So, of course, Caldwell was senior head, senior or later, uh, to take her across the plant of his annual trips. They will set a time when wagon trains went by ways up here in the north, that's South Fork on the south, and incidentally, the Indians, uh, a homicide was tendencies and, and develop ideas as to the properties of doing what the, they were told made things interesting um, occasionally, but not often. Um, there was really no danger to the good science train. The daughter has this fiance, um, fiance named Ellen, who lied roughing it too. So he went along. He and Miss Cowell breaked himself um, bountifully and prepared to enjoy the trip. Up here is the train to aid wagons was made up and then they were joined by Alfred's by Billy Knapped and these two women were interesting but uh, tyrannical. On one of the two points, such as getting out of signs of the train, for instance. They were so indefinite in reasons for their tyrannies, the young people chaffed uh, and finding Billy Knapped either uh, um, imperturbable. 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 Or thick skinned. They turn their attentions to Alfred. Um, Ellen annoys Alfred and Miss Cowell flawlessly approached a balance between the succeeded often as shocking fearfully all the time man's finer sensibilities. Um, if it had been a question of Ellen alone, they and Ellen's annoyance would soon um, have ceased. Um, efforts would simply have bashfully killed him. But because of his innate court courtesy, innate courtesy, which so saturated him, saturated him, so that the philosophy of life was thoroughly tinged by it, and he was so inactive. There is a great deal to recommend a, a plan's journey journey at first. Later, there is nothing at all to recommend it. Um, it has the same monotony as the voyage of at sea, uh, only there is less living room. And instead of being carried, you must progress to a great extent by your own volition. Volition. As the further is coursed, the water pours and the cannot bath bathe um, to black blame man and or a man who has his instinct the things are as nothing is in, in conversion with the charms uh, of the outdoor life. And the blazing tingling uh, the, um, of adventure. The woman is a creature wedded to comfort. She also has a strange instinctive desire to be entirely alone every once in a while. Probably because her experiences were not less numerous than the man's are merely um, psychical, psychical, and, and she needs occasionally time to get uh, thought out to date, so Miss Cadwell began to get uh, very impatient. The afternoon of the uh, 16 days of Brett, Miss Cadwell and, and Ellen rode along side by side. Alfred was telling herself a fast, a facing story of adventure, and Miss Cadwell was listening carelessly because she has nothing else to do. Ellen's shaft lazily when the fancy took him. What kind of limb? asked the young Esterner with a great brutality. He glanced with a half new humorous science at a girl, who to whom the little man has been mainly addressing himself. Alfred hesitated, blushed, lost the thread of his tail, and finally get uh, grace confusions. 
Reims bagged his horse by the hash uh, Spanish bed. He fell uh, to the rear of little wagon trains where he slung his head and, and went hot and cold by turns and thinking of such an ind indiscretion before a lady. The young Easterner spurred up on the right of a girl's mount. His queerest little fellow ever saw. He observed with a laugh, um, laugh, sorry to spoil his story. Was this good one? Um, it might have been if uh, you hadn't spoiled it, answered the girl, flicking her horse ears mischievously. The animal danced. What did you do for it? What did you do for it for? Oh, to see him squirm. He think of all, uh, all the rest of the afternoon, and, and we hardly dare look you in the face next time we meet. I know, isn't she, he's funny? The other morning, he came around the corners of the wagon and caught me with my hair down. I wish you, uh, you could have seen him. She laughed gaily at memory. Let's get ahead uh, of the dust, she suggested. The drew us on to him from turf um, at the prairies and, and put their horses to a slow lope. Once while we had to canvas covers, schooner, schooners, uh, they slow down to walk again. I first say we will see them t uh, tomorrow, said the girl. See what? What hills? Uh, they will show like a dark streak down past that boat there. Was it them? Porcupine tails. Oh yes, uh, and, and after it's only three days. Are you glad? And you? Yes, I believe I am. Well, I'll be fun at first, but there's certain monotonies in making your toilet where you have to dog your hat because you haven't brooms to braid your hands and this barrels, water pots after a time. I think I will glad to see your hounds again. People like camping about so long. It hasn't gone back to on me yet. While you're a man, I can't do things. Can't do odd. Can you do things? Uh, you, you never can't. What do you suppose that they say if I were to ride about, right down just at the wait for two miles? They have a fit. Who's had a fit? Nobody but off red. And I didn't know you've gotten afraid of him yet. I say just less. We'll have a race in and then come right back. The young man looked boorishly eager. It would be nice. It would be nice. She mused. They gazed into each other's eyes like a pair of children and laughed. Why should we, why shouldn't we, are still young men? I'm dead sick of staying in a moving circle at these confound, confounded wagons. What's the sense of it all? Way, of, of, all of, of it all? Way? Why, Indians, suppose, say the girl. Daffily, Indians, he blind, refined contents, Indians, we hadn't seen a sign of one since we left here. I don't believe there are once a whole blast country. Besides, you know that Af um, Alfred says uh, at our last camp. What did Alfred say? Alfred said he hadn't seen even TB Trail, that uh, and that it must be odd hunting buffalo. Besides that, you don't imagine for a moment that your father was take you, you on his way to Deadwood for a lack, lark. If uh, there was the slightest danger to you, uh, I, I don't know, I made him. She looked down over a long sweeping descent to which they were coming, and the long sweeping ascents they lay beyond. The breeze in the sun played with the prairie's glass grasses, the breeze rift, rifling and over, and the sun silvering down their surface thus exposed. It was truly peaceful, and one almost expected to hear the hums of bees as a New England orchid, and its awe was a sign of life. We got lost, she said, finally. Oh, no, we wouldn't. He asserted with all the eagerness of the amateur plainsman. I got that all figured out. You see, our train is going to on the line with the butter behind us and the sun, so if we go ahead and keep our shoulder just pointing to the bud, we will rise be the lunch a march. She looks to her for admirations uh, of his cleverness. She seemed convinced she agree and sent him back to her wagons for some article of inventive necessity. 
While he was gone, she slipped softly over the little hills to the right, cantered rapidly over two more, and slowed down with a sign of satisfaction. Once alone, could watch the directly shadow as well as two. She was a tree and alone. It was the one thing she has desired for last six days, a long planned journey, and she enjoyed it now to the full. No one has seen her go. The driver drowned stupidly along. It was the their wont. The occupants of the wagon slept, as was the wont, and the diminutive Alfred was hiding his blushes behind clouds of dust in the debris. It was not his wont at all. He has been surreal, sadly soft, and he wants to have probes over as all the afternoons. If his discovery has not started him too actively, activity on a bare spot of the prairies, he discerned the prints of the hoof. It was not that of one of the trained animals. Every knew this, because just to one side of it, caught under the grass blades. So clun- cunningly that only a little scout's eyes could have discerned it at all. Was a single blue of a bed. Alfred rode out on the prairies to right and left, and f- and found her prints of about thirty ponies. He pushed his head back and wrinkled his brows. For the one thing he was looking for, he couldn't could not find the two narrow furrows made the end of tepee. Poles dragging along on these third signs of the ponies. The absence of these indicates that the band was composed entirely of bugs, and bugs were likely to mean mischief. He pushed ahead of the whole parties, his eyes fixed earnestly on the ground at the top of hills. He encountered the young Esterner, the later looked puzzle, in a half humorous way. I left Miss Cowell here a half minute ago. He observed to Alfred, and I guess she's given me a slip. Scold her good for me when she comes in, will you? He grinned with good nature's malice. The, the idea is Alfred scolding anyone. Then Alfred surprised him. The little man straightened suddenly in his saddle and uttered this fer- fervent curse. After a brief circle about the prairie, he returns to the young man. You go back to wagon and wake up Billy Nat and tell him this that I'm gone scouting this um, and I him and want him to watch down. Understands what challenge? What begins the Esterner be watered? I'm a going to find her, says the little man decidedly. You don't think there is any danger, do you? asks the Esterner in anxious tones. Can I help you? You do as I tell you replied the little man, shortly and rode away. He followed Miss Cadwell's trail quite rapidly, for the trail was fresh. As long as he looked intently for her cuff marks, nothing was to be seen, and the theory was apparently virgin. But by glancing the eyes forty or fifty yards ahead, a fence line with discernible, thrilly grasses. Every come upon Miss Cadwell seated quietly on her house, in the very central and prairie dog towns, and so, of course, in the midst of the area of comparatively desert character. She was amused herself at watching the marmots as the marmots as the bark of watch a peep at her, according to the distance from her. The sign of Alfred was not coming, for he afraid as their marmots. When he saw Miss Cowell, Alfred grew bashful again. His settled, his horse up to his her and blushed. I will show you the way, miss, he said differently. Thank you, replied Miss Cabell. Cowell, with a sly coldness. I can find my own back way. My own way back. Yes, of course, hastens Alfred in the agony. But you but don't you think you we ought to start back now? I'd like to go with you. Miss, you won't really let me. You see the afternoon quite late. Miss Cabell casts his critical eyes at the sun. Why is hoar yet still dark? She says amusedly. Then a fret surprised Miss Cabell. His different, diffident manner suddenly left him. 
A jump like lightning from his horse threw the reins over the animal head, so it would stand and run around and face Miss Cuthbert. Here jumped out. He commanded the subsound burr of his ordinary conversation has given place to clear and seriousness. And and seriousness. Miss Cuthbert looked at him amazed, seeing that he did not at once obey. Alfred actually began to fumble hastily with a strap that held her riding skirt in place. There was so unnat, unusual, and a bashful effort that Miss Caldwell rose and slipped in lightly to the ground. Now what? She asked. Alfred, without replying, drew the bit to within a few inches of the animal hoof and tied both fetlocks firmly together with a double loop. This brought the pony who nose down close to his shackled feet. Then he did the same thing with his own beast, that neither animal could so could so much as nobble, one way or the other. They were securely moored. Alfred stepped a few paces to the eastward. Miss Kawa followed. Sit down, said he. Miss Kawa obeyed with some nervousness. She did not understand at all, and that made her afraid. She began to have a dim fear lest Alfred might have gone crazy. His next move strengthened his suspicion. He walked away ten feet and raised his hand over his head, palm to forward. She watched him so intensely that for a moment she saw nothing else than she followed the directions of his gaze and uttered a little sobbing cry. But below his skyline, the first lob to Edward's eastward was so halted, so halted, a figure on horseback. The figure on horseback says, "Motionless. We are in for. We are in for a fight. We are in for a fight." Said Alfred, coming back after a moment. He wants after my peace lines, and if he sees, he can't make a run for it through this town. We just got to stand him up. That is one of the stories of Alfred. There is many of them still floating around the West. Ah,、uh, for Alfred was in a time very well known. He was a little man, and he was bashful. That is most that any can say against him. But he was very little and very bashful. Bashful. Once on horseback, his legs hardly reached the lower body lines of his mount, and only his extreme agility, agility, enabled him to get on safely. When on foot, strangers were inclined to call him sunny. In company, he never advanced an opinion. In things, if things did not go according to his ideas, he reconstructed the ideas and made the best of it. Only he could make the most efforts in spite of the poorest ideas of any man on the plains. On the plains, his attitude was a perpetual slighting apology. It was as being said that Alfred killed his man. Differently, differently, without enthusiasm, I fell lot to take the responsibilities. And this is the pioneer days on the plains was either frivolous affection, suffocation, or else effort with women's heat was lost. It was taken to have a stake and、um, staked the last ones. Of just、uh, at odds that he has never in his life made a definite assertion of fact to one of that opposite sex. Um, when it become absolutely necessary to change a woman's、uh, preconceived notions, a preconceived conceived notion as to what she should do, as for instance, discouraging her writing through consent. He would persuade somebody else to share the advice, and he would cower in the background, blushing his absurd little blushes at his second-hand temerity. Temerity. After this narrow, slumming shudder, a soft voice and demeanor. And mere to pin Y face. But Alfred can read the、uh, prairies like a book. 
Perry. 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 It's like a book. It can write anything. She was like, accurately was the heart of phrase and nothing. And could fight like a little kid amount when occasions for is really a rose. Cat amount. Among those who knew, Afri was considered one of the best scouts on the plains. Scouts. That was why Cadwell, the capitalist and capitalist, engaged him when he took the daughter out of Deadwood. Miss Caldwell was determined to go to Deadwood. A limited experience of the ladies' sword, where they have wooden floors, and tent, towels to the tent poles, an expert close to the declar uh, delectation. Delectation of the campers has convinced her that wrapping it was her first race creation. So, of course, Caldwell was senior hat, senior all later. Uh, to take her across the plant of his annual trips. There was at a time when wagon trains went by ways up here in the north, that South Fork uh, on the south, and incidentally, the Indians, uh, a homicide was tendencies and, and developed ideas as to the properties of during what the, they were told, made things interesting um, occasionally, but not often. Um, there was really no danger to good science train. The daughter has this fiance, um, fiance named Ellen, who liked roughing it too, so he went along. He and Miss Cowell breaked themselves out bountifully and prepared to enjoy the trip. Up here, the train to aid wagons was made up, and then they were joined by Alfred by Billy Knapp, and these two women were interesting but uh, tyrannical. On one of the two points, such as getting out of science of the terrain, for instance. They were so indefinite in reasons for their tyrannies, the young people chaffed uh, and finding Billy Nat either uh, in, uh, impert imperturbable. 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 Or thick skinned. They turn their attentions to Alfred. Um, Ellen annoyed Alfred and Miss Cowell flawlessly approached of Ellen. Between they succeeded often as shocking fearfully all the time man's finer sensibilities. Um, if it had been a question of Ellen alone, they and Ellen's annoyance would soon um, have ceased. Um, Alfred would simply have bashfully killed him. But because of his innate courtesy, innate courtesy, which so saturated him, saturated him, so that the philosophy of life was thoroughly tinged by it, and he was so inactive. There is a great deal to recommend a, a plan's journey. Journey at first, later there is nothing at all to recommend it. Um, it has the same monotony as the voyage of its at sea. Uh, only there is less living room. And instead of being carried, you must progress to a great extent by your own volition. Volition. Also, the further is coursed, the water pours and the cannon bath bath um, to black blind men and or a man who has his instinct, the things are. As nothing is in, in conversion with the charms uh, of the outdoor life. And the pleasing tinkling uh, the, um, of adventure. The one is a creature wedded to comfort. She also has a strange instinct of desire to be entirely alone every once in a while. Probably because her experiences were not less numerous than the man's are merely um, psychical, psychical, and, and she needs occasionally time to get uh, thought up to date, so Miss Cadwell began to get uh, very impatient. The afternoon of the 16 days of Fred 
Miss Cowell and, and Ellen rode along side by side, Alfred was telling himself a fast, a facing story of adventure, and Miss Cowell was listening carelessly because she has nothing else to do. Ellen shaft lazily when the fans seal took in. What kind of limb? Asked the young Easterner, with a great brutality. He glanced with a half new humorous assignment at a girl, who to whom the little man has been mainly addressing himself. Alfred hesitated, blushed, lost the thread of his tail, and finally get uh, grace confusion, reins back his horse by the hash uh, Spanish bed. He fell uh, to the rear of little wagon trains where he slung his head and, and went hot and cold by turns and thinking of such an in indiscretion before a lady. The young Easterner spurred up on the right of a girl's mount, his queerest little fellow ever saw. He observed with a laugh, um, laugh, sorry to spoil his story. Was this a good one? Um, it might have been if uh, you hadn't spoiled it, answered the girl, flicking her horse ears mischievously. The animal danced. What did you do for it? What did you do for it for? Oh, to see him squirm. He think of all, um, all the rest of the afternoon, and then we hardly dare look you in the face next time we meet. I know, isn't she, he's funny? The other morning, he came around the corners of the wagon and caught me with my hair down. I wish you, uh, you could have seen him. She laughed gaily. A memory. Let's get a hat uh, of the dust, she suggested. The drew us on to him from turf um, of the prairies and, and put their horses to a slow lope. Once while we had to canvas covers, schooner, sco schooners, uh, they slowed down to walk again. I first say we will see them t uh, tomorrow. Say the girl. See what? What hills? Uh, they will show like a dark streak. Down past that boat there. What's his name? Porcupine tails. Oh yes, uh, and in after is only three days. Are you glad? And you? Yes, I believe I am. The lab is fun at first, but there is certain monotony in making your toilet where you have to dog your hat because you haven't brooms to braid your hand. And this barrels, water pots. After a time, I think I will be glad to see you hounds again. People like camping about so long. It hasn't gone back to on me yet. While you're a man, I can't do things. Can't do on. Can you do things? Uh, you, you know, I can't. What do you suppose that they say if I were to ride about, ride down just the way for two miles? They have a fit. Who's had a fit? Nobody but off red. And I didn't know you have gotten afraid of him yet. I say just less. We'll have a race, Ian, and then come right back. The young man looked boorishly eager. It would be nice. It would be nice. She mused. They gazed into each other's eyes like a pair of children and laughed. Why should we? Why shouldn't we? Are still young men. I'm dead sick of staying in a moving circle at these confound. Confounded wagons. What's the sense of it all? Way, of, of all? Of, of it all? Way. Why Indians suppose? Say the girl. Definitely Indians. He blind, replied to contents. Indians. We hadn't seen a sign of one since we left here. I don't believe there was a whole blast country. Besides, you know that Af um, Alfred says uh, at our last camp. What did Alfred say? Alfred said he hadn't seen even TB trail, that uh, and that it must be odd hunting buffalo. Besides that, you don't imagine for a moment that your father was take you you uh, on this way to Deadwood for, for a lark. Lark, if uh, there was the slightest danger, do you? Uh, I I don't know. I made him. She looked down over a long sweeping descent to which they were coming. And the long swimming essence they lay beyond. The breeze and the sun played with the prairie's glass grasses, the breeze rift, rifflings them over, and the sun silvering their under surface thus exposed 
It was truly peaceful, and one of the most expected to hear the hums of bees as in New England's orchid. And it's all was a sign of life. We got lost, she said, finally. Oh, no, we wouldn't. He asserted with all the eagerness of the amateur plainsman. We got that off the ear downs. You see, our train is going to on the line with the butter behind us and the sun, so if we go ahead and keep our show up, just pointing to the bud, we will rise be a lunch, a march. She listened to her for admirations uh, of his cleverness. She seemed convinced she agreed and sat and begged to her wagons for some article of inventor's necessity. While he was gone, she slipped softly over the little hills to the right, cantered rapidly over two more, and slowed down with a sign of satisfaction. Once alone, could watch the directly shadow as well as two. She was tree and alone. It was the one thing she has desired for last six days, a long planned journey, and she enjoyed it now to the full. No one has seen her go. The driver drowned stupidly along. It was the their wont. The occupants of the wagon slept, as was the wont, and the diminutive Alfred was hiding his blushes behind clouds of dust in the debris. It was not his wont at all. He has been surreal, sadly soft, and he lines have probes over as all the afternoons. Every discovery has not started him too actively. Activity on the bare spot of the peris who discerned the prince of the hoof. It was not that of one of the trained animals. Avery knew this because just to one side of it, caught under the grass blades, so clung cunningly that only a little scout's eyes could have discerned it at all. It was a single blue of a bed. Everest rode out on the prairies to right and left, and, f and found to her friends of about thirty ponies. He pushed his pet back and wrinkled his rounds, for the one thing he was looking for, he could and could not find, the two narrow furrows made the end of teepee poles dragging along on these their signs of the ponies. The accent of these indicates that the band was composed entirely of bugs, and bugs were likely to mean mischief. He pushed ahead of the whole parties, his eyes fixed earnestly. On the ground, at the top of heels, he encountered the young Esterner, the later look puzzle, in a half-humorous way. I left Miss Cowell here a half minute ago. He have served to Alfred, and I guess she's given me a slip. Scold her good for me when she comes in, will you? He grinned with good nature's malice, the, the idea is Alfred scolding anyone. Then Alfred surprised him. The little man straightens suddenly in his saddle and utters this fer fervent curse. After a brief circle about the prairie, he returns to the young man. You go back to wagon and wake up Billy Nat and tell him this, that I'm gone scouting the sound, and I him and I want him to watch down. Understand? Watch out. What? Begins the Esterner be watered. I'm a going to find her, says the little man decidedly. You don't think there is any danger, do you? Asks the Esterner in anxious tones. Can I help you? You do as I tell you replied the little man, shortly and rode away. He followed Miss Cadwell's trail quite rapidly, for the trail was fresh. As long as he looked intently for her muff marks, nothing was to be seen, and the theory was apparently virgin, but by glancing the eyes forty or fifty yards ahead, a fence line with discernible, thrilly grasses. Every come upon Miss Cadwell seated quietly on her house, in the very central and prairie dog towns, and so of course in the midst of the area of comparatively desert character. She was amused herself at watching the marmots of the marmots as the bark of watch a peep at her, according to the distance from her. The sign of Alfred was not coming, for he frightened their marmots. When he saw Miss Cowell, Alfred grew bashful again. His 
said all. His horse up to his her and blushed. I will show you the way, miss, he said differently. Thank you, replied Miss Cabell. Caldwell, with a slight coldness. I can find my own back way. My own way back? Yes, of course, hastened Alfred in the agony. But you but don't you think you we ought to start back now? I'd like to go with you. Miss, you really let me. You see the afternoon quite late? Miss Cabell cast his critical eyes at the sun. Why is poor yet still dark? She said amusedly. Then a fresh surprise Miss Cowell. His different diffident manner suddenly left him. He jumped like lightning from his horse, threw the reins over the animal head, so he would stand and run around and face Miss Cowell. Here jumped out, he commanded the soft sound and burr of his ordinary conversation has given place to clear and seriously and incisiveness. Miss Cowell looked at him amazed. Seeing that he did not at once obey, Alfred actually began to fumble hastily with a strap that held her running skirt in place. There was so unusual and a bashful effort that Miss Cowell rose and slipped in lightly to the ground. Now what? she asked. Alfred, without replying, drilled the bit to within a few inches of the animal hoof and tied red fat locks firmly together with a double loop. This brought the pony who knows down close to his shackled feet. Then he did the same thing with his own beast, because neither animal could so could so much as noble, one way or the other. They were securely moored. Alfred stepped a few paces to the eastward. Miss Cowell followed. Sit down, said he. Miss Cowell obeyed with some nervousness. She did not understand at all, and that made her afraid. She began to have a dim fear lest Alfred might have gone crazy. His next move strengthened his suspicion. He walked away ten feet and raised his hands over his head, palm to forward. She watched him so intensely that for a moment she, she saw nothing else than she followed the directions of his gaze and utters a little sobbing cry. But below his skylines, the first lob to Asper's eastward was Still halted. Still halted. A figure on horseback. The figure on horseback says, "Motionless. We're on in for. We are in for a fight. We are in for a fight." Said Alfred, coming back after a moment. He won't answer my peace lines, and if he sees, he can't make a run for it through this town. We just got to stand him up 